What's going on, you ham hawk and hammer hummer givers? <laughs> oh, God. Welcome oh. to Grunt Speak. <laughs> Live from the lair. <laughs> He's still getting used to it. That dude gets one of these. Ah, oh, you bastard. Quit throwing the damn penises at me. Man. I'm Toxic Mayo. That's the Rotund Revenger. We are up to 484 lives saved just literally about five minutes before we went live. Yep. Got a new email. Apparently, uh, that video I did the other day, that was what well, came out yesterday. Yeah. And uh, it, apparently, people saw it and said, holy fuck. Well,. Some people, I mean, especially this time of year, they, they need to hear it. it just it, Don't read the whole thing. Just read oh, the no, parts. Oh, no, we can get into it. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to make sure we extend a special welcome to one of our good buddies. You love him. We love him. No homo. Unchained Skid. How you doing? Good, sir. Very, very good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, brother. Anytime. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to knock these out here before we get into some stuff about Canada. 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 A can of don't. Get to invade them for their beer. <laughs> uh, the 482 good... comes from Jim. Uh, I've been watching your videos for the past few years now and have tried to spread the word of MGTOW to the younger men that I work with. Your videos did indeed save my life after a bitter and bad breakup during the middle of the COVID outbreak. To be honest, you saved me from doing some bad shit to a few people. <laughs> so thank you for what you have done, not only for me, but for the 400 plus men that might not be here today if it weren't for your work. I salute you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Jim. That's why we do what we do, man. Uh, number 843, because, you know, Liz Dexia just runs among the grunts, I guess. <laughs> no, 483, yeah. This is from Battle Dwarf. When I got out of the army, I tried to drink myself to death several times. This was 2005. I'd blackout drink and drive. Because, you know, great idea. Uh, peak stupid and very lucky I never heard anyone else or worse. I went through years of misery from the family courts, losing my career, losing my TS and CSI security clearance, being endlessly humiliated because I couldn't find work and suffering from the loss of not being allowed to raise my daughter, whom I absolutely doted on. You were the first person since I got out who didn't tell me, oh, get over it, or oh, it's all in your head. Hell, my own mother, a stunning example of boomer baby daddy's girl, professional misandrist and raging narcissist, told me the whole thing was my fault. <laughs> yes, Mom, I made my wife sleep with BDEHHD first sergeant while I was deployed. That's a bur brigade headquarters company gotcha. first sergeant while deployed. I thought it might have been some sort of acronym for something you yeah, search for on one page. I name <laughs> first sergeant white. But there's a bazillion of them in the army, so yeah, we so could say that. Yeah, his wife probably went for first sergeant, big black cock. Uh, and you put a purpose in front of me with what research we did. I credit you with talking me out of suck starting a Mossberg, no homo. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, good sir. And then we have Patriot 13. A little backstory, I was first introduced to your content and to that of Sandman's back in 2017 by my boss and coworker while working as an independent general contractor for a small company. My boss would hook up his phone to the truck speakers and play videos on YouTube practically every day. You got a cool boss, man. I can't remember how he got turned on to your content or the MGTOW community, but I do remember falling into fits of laughter each time Pop would ask for a screen five or whenever Pop would come up with a new phrase on the spot. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was still in my DDT, and the, mes and the messages and stories weren't quite sinking into my thinking meat. As such, I have a number of Wango Tango stories as well as a paranormal story that I can share in the future email if you two are interested. Absolutely. Yeah. Now for the reason I'm writing, for the past several days I've had an unexplained onset of melancholy. Not full-on depression, but a bit of overwhelming feeling of being lonesome, ornery, and mean. I'm loath to admit it, but being unable to pinpoint the source of this feeling, I thought of becoming unalive and putting it into the numbness that did enter my mind. I don't quite know how to explain why I did, but I opened YouTube and the first video on my feed was the Live from the Lair episode on the Holiday Blues. To say that message resonated with me would be an understatement of the year. I was pulled back from the brink just enough to recalibrate myself and mentally thank Pop for being the voice of reason. Thank you very much, man. We love to hear these stories. Yeah, listen, there's so many guys out there who are beyond the edge and they're just, they're really on the verge of just saying, fuck it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we just try to make you laugh and. Well, like, that's why I. <laughs> that's what we need. I, well, I do the laughter thing. And I tell people to play the long game because you never know. I mean, life yeah. is an ocean and storms come up and then there's dead areas where the wind doesn't blow and you stay there and stagnate. Could be for years. 
if you punch out early, you don't know if it's going to radically change. Yeah. Like, you could be at the gas station, buy a scratch it ticket, and win five million fucking dollars. Million. You oh. never know. Yeah, you never know what life is going to throw at yeah, you, man. That's why you never, ever assign a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Yeah. Now, listen, uh, I am not an anti, um, basically, uh, suicide guy in re- in this regard. Well, there's, if you are sick. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you have, there's. it's not a good diagnosis, and you are not going to have a good outcome. And now, this is not what we're, they're doing in Canada, no. where euthanasia is now the sixth leading cause of death, where it's, oh, yeah. you got a skin tag? Uh, well, <laughs> we don't really want to pay for it. How about you just off yourself instead? Well, like, for instance, you have like, bone cancer. That is a long, slow, drawn-out, painful, yeah. agonizing death. Unless you're goat belly, apparently, and you can beat that shit at home using holistic methods, in which case we need to have that guy on the show. Goat belly! Take a couple hours off, man. Just just talk to us. Yeah. We want to know what you did. <laughs> well, a lot of it had to do with fasting. Yes. I mean, that dude, well, I'd have done the same thing. I'd have been like, hmm, hmm. this can't be the only answer because no. there's very few things in life that have only one answer. Yeah, and uh, poisoning the ever-loving shit out of your body with radiation and chemotherapy doesn't really seem like the only answer to me. Having watched my father die from it, it yeah. uh, it didn't look like much fun. No. Uh, all right. Well, now that we're all depressed, why don't we uh, <laughs> raise a <laughs> shot drinking. to those three lives saved? This is for you, gentlemen. Mm. Oh, hot damn. Texas Rail Dog, you were a sadistic motherfucker. You got me hooked on this whiskey. <laughs> it's so good. But anyway, Skid, how the hell you been doing, man? We haven't talked to you in a bit. Well, not too bad, not too bad at all. <clears throat> I decided to uh, go down to your fair country and take a look at California oh, just to see if uh, see if all the stories were everything that they said. And uh, yeah, I would say that uh, even as a Canadian going down, I'm like, wow, this place is left. So, uh, you know. Yeah, because yeah. didn't you say in Canada there's basically three political parties? You got center left. Kind of left and far left. You got like kind of, well, nowadays I say mostly center for the conservatives, left for the liberals for sure, and then really far left for the NDP. So, yeah, Ugh. California was, uh, I mean, my main reason for going down there was actually visit a buddy of mine who's uh, living uh, near Mojave, right where all that aerospace stuff was going on there. And we had a great <laughs> time and it was really wonderful and uh, lots of stuff coming up for that. It was very, very cool to be down there. Nice. That's actually near NTC. Oh, yeah? National Training Center. Yep. I hate that fucking place. <laughs> yeah. I had to go there three times in my career, yeah. and every time was nothing but a long, drawn-out, whipping, <laughs> and then, <laughs> cat of nine tails of ass-baggery, bullshit, <laughs> and <laughs> stupidity. Oh, my God! It the was passion insane. of the popster. <laughs> yeah. It sucked. <laughs> Was that uh, was that all for jumping, like uh, all uh, airborne ops? <clears throat> no, no. I mean, uh, I jumped into White Sands when I was with the Ranger Battalion. Um, but typically, the joint uh, JRTC, Joint Readiness Training Centers, where they send a bunch of different units, and then they uh, conduct a simulated war, and you have all the elements moving around, and it gets it is pretty, uh, you know good when it comes to coordinating with like air assets artillery mortars and stuff like that and even other branches of the military sometimes come in and do their thing but it, it's a fucking desert there's only cold and hot of course there's yeah. really nothing in between it's freezing cold at night and scorching out during the day it's insane it's like mars yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's 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 what hell of a place i mean it's interesting how much stuff they do out there like where i was at of course right by edwards and mojave airport palmdale it's like a huge aerospace place right because the weather's great there 340 days a year but it is hot oh my god and i tell you my buddy's kind of living a little bit out there in the desert there's some strange shit going on out there, man. <laughs> in the mean, desert? Never. Crap. Well, they have, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, don't even get me into the whole paranormal shit out there. <laughs> uh, I'm not- just talking about the meth houses that people spring up in the uh, in oh. the uh, abandoned places. I mean, holy God. I mean, meth houses. You know, huh? Well, there's, there, 
what there is is like you know there's houses out there that people have abandoned you know whatever they couldn't pay the mortgage on so squatters oh. are in there doing all kinds of crazy shit i mean oh my god meth and dicks yeah yep meth and dicks <laughs> meth and dicks <laughs> uh, speaking so fun of times, fun times. Uh, speaking of meth and dicks, I know you you came down to visit California, Stan, and, and strangely enough, that made you kind of glad to go home. But <laughs> you've been telling us about some <clears throat> absolute apex predator crazy shit going on up in Canada, and you sent me this article here. So for those of you who have not yet seen it. Trudeau's plan to freeze handguns spurred six months of incredible sales, and now that the handgun sales are illegal, 30% of their business is gone. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Woo! So, uh, so this story started back in about April, and uh, that's when Trudeau said that, guess what, I'm going to make it so that you can't buy, sell, or transfer a handgun. Now, we'll give, we'll give them credit for being pretty smart about this because it means that if you have your handgun already, they're not going to come and take it from you. But they've made it so no one else can get one and you can't do anything with yours. So, for example, you know, I got three daughters. I bought handguns for each of them to give to them as they each got older and did their uh, courses and stuff like that. I can't give them their handguns now because I'm not allowed to transfer them. So he, uh, it's pretty smart way of doing the first step to grabbing them, right? So he came up with this idea in April and said it to everybody because obviously uh, keeping um, a lid on legal handgun owners isn't going to do anything for handgun crime, obviously. No. But it's all about the politics for his base, right? If he can have a wedge issue and say, look what I'm doing on this, it keeps his base voting for him. So he had to make that announcement. But what that announcement did, even though they knew that Parliament wasn't going to be meeting again until the fall to actually uh, ratify any of this, he made the announcement and all of a sudden everybody was buying a handgun as fast as they could because there was like, oh, my God, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it. And that's what that article was a little bit about. So what they did was, as they saw this happening, they... Uh, the federal government has control over imports, right? You know, they can decide what's coming in another country. So those bastards, what they did was, is they made importing handguns illegal uh, about a month ago. And so now that cut off the flow because, of course, most handguns uh, coming into Canada, either illegally or legally, come from the states, right? So the, uh, the import ban on handguns was actually only from the states. You could have imported from, from somewhere else, but hardly any other handguns come from anywhere else. So then the finally, finally, uh, what put the nail in the coffin here was just on October 21st, they had uh, what's called an order in council. An order in council is uh, equivalent to like an executive order down there. So it's not anything voted on by, uh, by the, the House of Commons, which is the equivalent of the Congress. This is no vote, no nothing. All of a sudden, boom, your handguns are frozen. So I don't know where we're going from here. I know that they'll they'll meet in Parliament eventually and they'll vote on this bill. They'll probably pass it for reasons that I'll go into uh, later, if you like. Okay. But uh, oh, but yeah, we're uh, we're this is the first step to uh, to weapons confiscation. Now, interestingly enough, just as a sidebar, um, last year they passed legislation where they banned assault rifles right <laughs> and assault rifles are basically defined as anything that looks scary because there was no they there was exist, no rhyme or reason really. to it right now what's interesting is is they are supposed to be that's supposed to be happening now there was a buyback program that was offered for it but now you're supposed to not have them well my province alberta uh the next one over saskatchewan the next one over manitoba and the territory of yukon has all said we are not going to use the RCMP, which is the federal police force, to confiscate these weapons. We think this is a bad idea, so we're not going to use it. So there's actually a bit of a showdown going on. So it would be like the equivalent between state and federal, provincial and uh, federal showdown here about whether this is actually going to get implemented or not. So stand by for more. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. <clears throat> wow. I was just looking through the article that you sent in, and this passage here really stuck out to me. Uh, Canadian firearms retailers were blindsided by last week's announcement on the freeze. Retailers say they were told they would be able to sell handguns until Bill C-21 passed. Mm -hmm. We were told that we would have until the legislation passes, or if there was any emergency measure, we'd be given lots of notice. It turns out we were not given notice. We were told on Friday morning that, oh, by the way, we just immediately instituted a ban by order of council, and that's retroactive to last night at midnight. Nice. 
That's some yeah. weapons grade horse shit right there. Yeah, that that yeah. is oh, for that sure. Is some well, it, up shit it's right there. it's abuse of power, right? I mean, yes. it, it, oh no, it's, no, it's, no. <laughs> no, we haven't seen gross abuse of power no. in the past three years, have we? No, Trudeau totally didn't freeze the bank accounts of truckers who yeah. were just trying to air a legitimate <laughs> oh. grievance with this disgusting oh. authoritarian bullshit. It's absolutely yeah. Don't that. even start me on that because they're having the inquest right now oh. as to uh, whether it was justified or not to invoke the emergencies act and we'll, we'll, we'll leave that for another because I I'll well we know it this. wasn't <laughs> yeah well <laughs> we well what's what's okay well well 30 seconds worth yeah we know it wasn't the evidence is coming out that it wasn't the big yep. problem is though is that there's no accountability of course so not. because because of the canadian parliamentary system you've actually got the liberals have a minority government so they're being supported by that far left government and the guy who's in or, uh, party, so that far left guy, his name is Jagmeet Singh. I'm not even kind of kidding. Jagmeet He's, Singh. Yes. He has stated categorically that even, <laughs> I know, right? Even if, even if the uh, inquest comes up and says it was totally not justified, totally illegal move, he says, I'll still support the government. I don't care. Wow. Well, there you go. I'm shocked. Shocker. Well, not yeah. really. But Shocker and a spocker. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rocker, the showstopper, and my personal favorite, the divorce. <laughs> so there you go. <sighs> That's why I've been calling it Canada or Kanukistan, if you prefer. Yeah. Because th- this is this is horrendous. I, I, no one's going to convince me that Trudeau was uh, fairly reinstituted. <clears throat> I well, think. Uh, y- y- well, here, here's the thing. Well, first of all, point number one, uh, it's creating fractures up here the same way you're seeing fractures down there. So, for example, we have a premier now, it's equivalent of a governor uh, of Alberta, who's <laughs> openly saying, yeah, we need to have Alberta separate from the rest of the country. Like, there's 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 motions going towards that. Uh, the first being the Sovereignty Act, where it's basically saying, look, if the federal government does anything we don't like, we're not going to follow it. There's more to it than that. Okay. There you go. I, have a, pro- I have a thought. The province beside us, Saskatchewan, has already passed one saying, yeah, we aren't, we're, we're, any legislation that comes from the federal government that is against our interest, we're not following either. So, I mean, stuff's coming apart. Like, it's not, it's not cool, man. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you have tyranny taking place. People like, like rational people realize there are certain ways things get done. The governments from back in the day put a process in place for things to get done. But corruption has allowed that to be hijacked. And we're, we are seeing this happen in real time with what our governments are doing. Yeah. Well, you, you know, to, to your point, <clears throat> you, were, you were mentioning, Blake, you said, well, uh, you, that maybe Trudeau didn't get in there fairly. Actually, I, I think he did. I think that he did win that vote. And the reason why I say that is because you've got so many people convinced down east. And so the eastern uh, voters, they're very much like your city voters, like New York uh, and then L.A. kind of thing. Same no, idea, no, liberal, Toronto? Liberal type vote. Exactly. There's yeah. no way Toronto is like New York or L.A. Uh, no. yeah. don't, don't, don't get me started. <laughs> Shut your but lying the, mouth. But the fact is, is that, you know, from all the censorship and the media blitzing and all that stuff, they got these people so convinced and so scared of everything that they keep voting for these ass clowns and there's no what do you do hell hell of a lot apparently i don't know man i don't know i I just don't get it i don't understand how you can see the direction that these countries are going in and think okay yeah what we need is more government because they're clearly not the problem they're different they love me well Well, what could go wrong for sure, for sure, we can definitely stop gun violence by taking guns away from the legal gun owners who go Absolutely. through this Listen, entire yes. process of trying to have your firearm. Did yeah, we have all of this gun violence prior to 1968? No, we did not. Nope. And you know why? We had the nuclear family. Yep. And that has been eroded. Mm-hmm. All right. And then you have the feminists come in and they... Yeah. I want all this emotional, touchy feely shit. Yep. And yeah. everyone got soft. Yeah. And now we're in the depopulation stage yeah. of their little event. So we're going to sterilize all the kids, <laughs> convince them that, you know, being a transformer is the best way forward. Abortion up to including 28 days after birth. What could go wrong? 
Yeah, I know. I know. Like, are, we have to have a private prison industry here in the United States just to manage the fucking carnage from the single mothers. Yep. They are literally felony factories that drop out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Woo! What you got to write that one down. You know that shirt? <laughs> you know that shirt that's the silhouette of the stripper on the pole and it says, I support single mothers? You, we should make one that says, we all support felony factories. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what's With happening. With our taxes. Eight, I mean, 85% of the people that wind up incarcerated. No father at no home. No father at home. And they try to, well, you know, they had mentors. It's not the same thing. No. Not the same thing at all. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> and then, funny enough, I mean, we see this going on up in Kanukistan, and then you go to Kukafornia Stan, and apparently it's worse. Yeah. Let that sink in. Uh, we actually got a couple of chats here that are germane to what we're talking about here. Larry Bentley said, we tried and failed to invade Canada during the War of 1812, the only time we failed. Canadians are pretty polite until you utter the word war. <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, we, we, we're not going to fight in the wintertime because A, it's cold, and B, we got to play hockey. So well, I mean, oh, yeah, there, yeah. There, there's that. Right? I have a feeling that if that were to happen today, it would be a completely different thing. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, in, in Canada now, like that's you know one of the only populations that where like most of the people enter the fight already missing teeth. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, during 1812, when we sent expeditions to invade Canada, yeah, there are a bunch of people, the hodgepodge of people thrown together. They had like no supplies, limited equipment. Now, maps were fucked up. They had Indian guides. Some of them didn't even like them. Yeah. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Soldier Girl 2022 sent us 20 bucks and says, have a drink on me. Thanks to Blake on Red Pill Rhino and good content pops on your last one. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Soldier Girl. Uh, we got Schlitz Malt Liquor with a donation. No comment. Thank you very much. Um, Noah Zunica says the lawsuit is called Coker v. Austin. Not sure which one that is. Uh, but K-Note says that we need to look up Measure 114 in Oregon. So I did. The Apparently, next... this, is a, this is a piece of anti-gun legislation that is really making the rounds here. Uh -huh. Dangerous, misleading, and extreme. They want you to think it's about background checks, which have been around forever. And, of course, we all know violent crime is totally not a problem in Oregon. Oh, yeah. That, that's why there's whole counties wanting to go become part of Idaho. Yep. Uh, you yeah. guys can take a look at this. It's called Stop114.com. Uh, ballot Measure 114 will virtually eliminate your ability to defend yourself and your family. This is the most, according to this website here, it says the most extreme gun control proposal in the country. Gun safety regulations on the November ballot could cost local governments. I mean, this this just goes on and on here. <clears throat> so uh, feel free to check it out. We can't get into it right now because we need to move on to the next thing. But yep, yep. Definitely look into it. Stop114.com. All right. And then uh, Fuzzy Wanderer says, In Canada, prior to 1976, machine guns were OTC. Look how far they've fallen. That's oh, because yeah. they used to have families back then. Yep. The guys had tanks in their garages. Yeah. <laughs> after World War II, literally people bought tanks. And it took a couple of years after the war till they stopped taking the turrets off of them. <laughs> <laughs> Like they would, they would demill the gun and like let you fucking have the tank, sons of bitches. And then they they took the turrets off so people could still drive the tank and use it for farming or whatever else they <laughs> farming. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Oh man, and uh, Doctor Fi also from Kanukistan says our last federal election we only had about sixty percent voter turnout. As sad as that is, that's still better than the United States. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll I didn't see. Vote for him. We'll see what the turnout's going to be like on the eighth. Uh, Trudeau's a piece of shit. On the eighth of this year for us. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, we I'm are going to be doing a midterms reaction stream on next Tuesday, yep. and we've sent out a few invites. I we don't have a confirmed guest list yet, but we know Red Pill Rhino is going to be with us. Mm -hmm. It's going to be good times. Jericho Green, unfortunately, had to decline. He's already going to have his own midterm shenanigans. Going. <laughs> So, <laughs> Good for him. I love that guy, though. He wants to come on again. Yeah, no problem. He was I like, awesome. I like that dude. 
So oh, speaking I'm, I'm, of, I'm, I'm sorry, good. I'm totally rooting for you guys. I'm, uh, I hope that works because I mean, uh, it, it's the change of the whole system well, and it affects right. the whole Western world. Right? Hang on. It's a big deal. Blake <laughs> is betting on us getting a strike and taken down. So we can't have a stream next week on YouTube. Uh, on, yeah. The, now the other five sites, it's game on. Yeah. But I, I'm saying <laughs> we have been, uh, in my, from my calculations, my ESP has not told me we're going to get a strike. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> But we'll see what happens has, after tomorrow's video. You have a valid argument. Yeah. So I'm I'm going with 25 percent chance we will get a strike tomorrow's video, which will be available on all platforms. Uh, if you are on New Tech, you already probably saw today's video, which was hysterically funny. It's about uh, how apparently picking your nose can give you dementia, and if you've seen Joe Biden attempt to speak. You probably probably explains a few things. Yep. <laughs> but tomorrow is all about the three proposals that are up for vote in Michigan for the midterms. All of them introduced by Democrats. All of them are fucking evil. Correct. So and keep an eye out what? for that one. You, I, on YouTube and all of the uh, legacy media, we've I've been getting like six or eight commercials for the Democrats and one for the yep. Republicans. Shocker. Oh boy, but. Traveling oh. from Canada, just like Skid did, down to California, Stan, we have to talk about Paul Pelosi. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody at this point already <laughs> knows what's going on, so I think it's funnier to just talk about the memes. I, I don't know what you think. No, no, throw the memes on there, then <laughs> but, afterwards. I mean, it's, it's apparently so bad. I mean, the funniest thing about this whole thing is that, of course, these are, this happened to Democrats, and the dude was an illegal alien on an overstayed visa. David DePape, I believe is his name. Yep. And one of the more interesting things that I noticed is that if you go down here, I mean, of course, the first thing that came out here, attack on Nancy Pelosi's husband follows years of the GOP demonizing her. Their immediate thing They're was... They're spinning it to the right. MAGA, it's all their fault, yeah. blah, blah, blah. We knew that was going to happen. But if you go yeah. down here, somebody who's actually doing journalism has a really good take on the whole thing. Doing the work the media should be doing. Author and researcher Michael Schellenberger accumulated a number of quotes from DePape's neighbors that seem to point to a far more plausible explanation. What I know about the family is that they're very radical activists. They seem very left. They're all about the BLM movement, yep. LGBTQ, WTF, LOL, pride, but they're very detached from reality. No. You, you mean to tell me that the average leftoid has no idea what the hell is going on? Shocker. <laughs> Among those things, their neighbors also said, homeless drug addict, paranoid and psychotic, a local nudist in Berkeley, or lived with a local nudist in Berkeley, moved out into a broken-down camper van, and lived in a yellow school bus on the street filled with refuse similar to homeless encampments. Jesus. A co-worker of DePape's claimed that he used hard drugs and believed that he talked to angels. Oh, because that's not crazy. These facts and more led Schellenberger to conclude DePape is not a microcosm of the political psychosis gripping America in general. He's a microcosm of the drug-induced psychosis gripping the West Coast in particular. But, the, but look, look, the, the Pelosi, her house has had, uh, you know, people protesting in the past. Yeah. And they had all kinds of security upgrades. Yep. Where the fuck are the security camera? Where's the footage? That is one thing that among the memes, I also have a couple of tweets that are very interesting. So you'll love this. But uh, mm. the, the memes are just, they're so choice. <laughs> <laughs> Possible modifications to a scary assault weapon is the Pelosi hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Love that here. Uh, here's the Dark Maga Bros versus Paul Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Where's the hammer aisle? <laughs> I love how he's got a Jussie on, on his underpants. Hammer, <laughs> tactical hammer and assault hammer. That's a good one. I like that. A home oh. invader costume includes <laughs> oh, two hammers, God. underwear, gay pride, weed flag, Berkeley stands united against hate sign, and lube. Oh, my God. Nice. They should have put an astroglide there. <laughs> they really should. You could drive a Cadillac into a doghouse with that shit. Uh, actual footage of the Paul Pelosi attack colorized, which includes his attacker, Paul Pelosi, and the unknown third person who lit in the police. Uh, speaking of which, that's a really important thing that we need to bring up here. Bing. 
Politico accused Republicans of spreading baseless conspiracies about Paul Pelosi because they repeated a report from Politico. And it was specifically about the unknown third person who let the cops. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, oh my God. Wow. And is Politico Just, News wow. Guard certified? Yes, they are. Okay, so people are getting hammered for quoting something that's News yep. Guard certified. Yeah. This is the original report here. It says officers arrived at the house, knocked on the front door, and were led inside by an unknown person. They discovered DePape and Pelosi struggling for a hammer. And after they instructed him to drop the weapon, Scott said DePape took the hammer and violently attacked Pelosi. Wait. And then a few uh -huh. minutes later, they're talking about when Trump starts bringing this up, Charlie Kirk, among those baseless claims that a third person answered the door when police arrived at the Pelosi home. Wow. Well, let's hope it shows up in the police reports. It, it'll, and it might, it, they're going to. They're going to suppress them. Yeah, you know oh, I know they are. But they're going to her house. The, those cops are going to have the body cameras on. They're not going to release that footage. Yet. But, but to Politico, I say this. I award you no points. <laughs> and may God have mercy Listen, on Listen, I'm telling you right now, in all of the <laughs> alphabet agencies, there's a large majority of people who are seeing all the political rhetoric and horse shit. Yep. They're going to leak that shit. It's going to mm -hmm. get leaked. I hope they do. I hope they do, too. This is a really bizarre story. And the more you find out about it, like the fact that the glass appears to be broken from the inside of the house. <laughs> oh, we was totally, you know, it was totally a break in. Well, then why is the window glass on the outside? All right. Now, hang on. Th this is not unheard of. A lot of people will break break the glass and then have a glove or something and pull the glass out to get to like a latch. Yeah. Because they don't want to stick their arm in there and get a, an, a deep cut. But the dude was in his underwear. I, I'm just, <laughs> listen, I am not telling you. I am just giving you the fact that that can happen. I don't think he came prepared for such a thing. <laughs> Unless he's packing much more than a squirrel right, down hang on. there. He didn't walk there in his underwear. Well, he probably wound up in his underwear because of some of the memes that we're going to be yeah, talking yes, about here in right. just a second. So you're going to enjoy this. Ah. So after, after this one, which I'm still trying to scrub out of my brain. <laughs> Any plans for tonight? I think I'll stay home and get hammered. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Nancy? <laughs> wow. Paul Pelosi crime scene video. I like that one. Oh, Police walking into Paul and Nancy Pelosi's home. <laughs> it was him, officer. <laughs> Image from inside the Pelosi house oh before it got crazy. <laughs> Oh my god. First rule of Hammer Club is there's no talking about Hammer Club. <laughs> Paul Pelosi costume. I'm sure there were a few people out there dressed like that yesterday. Oh my god, no. Oh uh, yes, officer. Uh. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm being attacked. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the best one. Yeah, Where's Nancy? <laughs> That, that one could be a Billy Von Baum if it didn't wasn't credited to some blonde moment person. Oh God! Oh, Paul Pelosi waiting for his tacker to show up. That's disgusting. Now this yeah, is yeah, this yeah, is one of my favorite true. ones here. This is a tweet from Cat Turd. I hope nobody with two hammers with a manifesto wearing only underwear gets past my fenced-in property, sneaks by my six alert dogs, breaks my window, hands me a hammer, and we get into a hammer fight tonight. <laughs> Like you said, he probably didn't show up there like that, which means that he got undressed on the property. Correct. I wonder why. Yeah. I mean, if you're a burglar and you want to break into a, a politician's home to hit her with a hammer, are you going to show up in your underwear? No, I already talked about this in uh, the supporters stream. Yeah. When they're, they're like, they're trying to pin this on the right. Of course they are. You're going to know it is the right because when and if they get pushed to the breaking point. It's not going to be some wacko psycho showing up. No, it's going It'll to be, be surgical. Precise, mm. surgical, absolutely lethal. Damn right. Attack. Because uh, more people on the right, I went into the military, and we yep. just spent over two decades at war. Mm -hmm. So they know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Now, I hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. And the new and enlisted the are not going to have the same fighting prowess as the veterans. No, no. And uh, actually, I'm, I'm putting together an uh, open letter to the military that's going to be released. It's being depopped right now. Of course it is. Because <laughs> it's atrocious. <laughs> but, uh, you know. 
you know that well, that meme of uh, Ken Jeong when he was on Community looking at the really tiny piece of paper like this? Yeah. I should make one of, of me doing that. You know, just put my face on Ken Jeong with like me trying to depop pop script. <laughs> Uh, what it's kind of what it's like. Eh, whatever. I write, I write good stories. So. Now, this one, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but obviously this got around enough. I haven't heard anything official about DePape in this regard. So take this with a grain of salt, even though it is hilarious. Now, this is just rumor control. Don't, yes. don't sue us. DePape tells investigators that he and Pelosi were engaging in gay sex and had an argument over drugs. Pelosi's are refusing to turn over the surveillance video of their home, fueling more speculation of uh, monkey butt, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. DePape has arrests for male prostitution. So, you know, uh, Mr. Pelosi could be a download, a download Dan. He could be. And if you had to go home to, you know, Michael Jackson's corpse 2.0, you, you know, <laughs> resuscitated by a car battery and well wishes, you might consider... You know what have been actually Putting more, from the rough, too. More funny <laughs> or funnier what? if a Sam showed up and got caught during all this stuff. A Sam? A Sir Ma'am. Oh. A Sam. Ooh. So Gretchen Whitmer shows up. <laughs> uh, she might enjoy something like this, considering she is stretching Gretchen. <laughs> That's the hammer used on Mr. Pelosi. Look, I don't even know what kind of hammer that is. And this one's from our own Jimmy Bones. I did not have sexual relations with that illegal hammer-wielding nudist hippie. And he, didn't he just get a DWI getting yes, pulled he over did. sometime after 1 in the morning? And it was completely swept under the rug, just like this is going to be. Yeah. Shocker. And, of course, there's the Pelosi assault hammer taken as evidence. That is disturbing. <laughs> that is very disturbing. It's got three different modes that run at different speeds. And I'm telling you right now, if that is a real product, it was <laughs> probably made that way so it didn't look like a panace. A panace, yes. <laughs> and if you buy the special deluxe version, it'll charge your phone. <laughs> so your gay lover can cry in the corner and tape you while you're getting railroaded by Jamal in his 14-foot erection. Yeah, well, my, my. Watch out for that, that peen pus, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pelosi, where are all the bruises from? Did you get hit with a hammer? No. It's Jamal. I got peeny pus. He, uh, his phone rang and he turned around too fast. <laughs> I got a big chorizo in my eye now. <laughs> and that was just the tip. <laughs> God. <laughs> Welcome to life in 2022, ladies and germs. Dude, we're fucked. We're, we're <laughs> fucked, man. We're Definitely. fucked. Definitely. Definitely. But if anybody does have any sort of uh, confirmation about the whole male prostitution angle that, that could lend some credence to this, please send it our way because I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah. We, we don't have nearly as many answers about this as we should. The media is too focused on trying to make us hate Kanye West than it is about actually doing real journalism. They're madder at Kanye than they were at Epstein. Let that sink in. Yeah, Epstein it, never had his fucking bank accounts canceled. Yeah. That's insane. And that's another thing we need to uh, address moving forward, especially if the red wave is as extreme as I think it's going to be, mm -hmm. is we need to start putting pressure on, a, on the lawmakers to crack the fucking whip on these banks. Yes. Because it is so fucking unconstitutional, because I can almost guarantee you we're going to find emails or emails will be released that uh, are basically our government instructing financial institutions to do the same thing big tech is doing. Yep. Punishing people for wrong think. The, the social credit score horseshit has no place in the United States of America. No, it doesn't. Yeah, and, and the fact that they're trying to get that here, they yep. can fuck off. Because I'm paying attention to a lot of the stories taking place in China and what their government is doing to their people. Did you know... That there's almost every single year, there's one or two provinces within China that go into uh, uh, what civil, not civil war, but uh, basically where they revolt. Yeah, there's minor revolts all the time in China that are violently put down. Yep, that's I, th that is not going to work here. I mean, they're willing to use fully automatic weapons on their own population just to make them stay home because of the coup. Yeah, they they have starved. A lot of people to death. Yep. And the reason they get away with it, nobody in China has any guns. Exactly. Except for the government. That is what they want. They and want to take the guns away from you 
so oh. they can herd you like sheep to the slaughter. Yep. And didn't Trudeau recently say that he thought China was one of the freest countries on the planet? Mm-hmm. It, it's not. It's not so much that he's him and his father both uh, really. Oh, sorry, sorry. His, his step, real his father. Stepfather, yeah. His stepfather and his real father. Uh, yeah, they're both yeah, pieces of both, shit. I'm both, glad they're both rotting. They, they all said that they looked up to China uh, yep. as a as a paragon of you know what we should be. And just further to your no. point, Pop. Mm-hmm. I mean, you do realize that during the Freedom Convoy there. Uh, that they were actually freezing people's bank accounts based on backtracing yep. donations through GoFundMe. Yeah, that now, that is that that is some next level yep. badass shit, man. And like, then that that in in a, in supposedly a free Western country, this shit's happening. Really free? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then PayPal that they had they leaked their little twenty five hundred dollar you know penalty scheme, and they said, oh no, no, that's not real. That Put was never right supposed back. to be out there. No, they walked it back and said that was never going to happen. And then, sure enough, it's in their new TOS. And you know what? That's another thing that they should go after: is PayPal is the FDIC insured, right? That means the federal government will step in and insure the losses of people who you know lose money in their accounts with under PayPal. Yep. Why the fuck are we a, are we? Ensuring a financial institution that is violating the constitutional rights yep. of the citizens of the country the company is from. Yep. And they started this. Oh, they started banning accounts because of misinformation. If you basically, if you spoke ill of the jab, yeah, you you were banned. That's why we got banned. Yeah. PayPal, Venmo, we're not on either one of them anymore. And now. I mean, after what? Let's see. Two years of lockdownerism, uh, children with stunted growth IQs and speech recognition. Uh, we're going to be raising a whole generation of sociopaths, thanks to these Democrats. I, I, I could go on and on with the list of vile shit that happened as a result of the scamdemic. And now what's the new line? Well, we want pandemic amnesty. We need to forgive oh, yeah. one another for what we did and said when we were in the dark about COVID. No, no, no. No, no. You were in the dark, and you made sure that the people who weren't couldn't fucking speak. Yeah, and they're still trying to shut us up. Yep. Now, listen, I get it. I mean, if the um, <laughs> the COOF had a death rate of like 15%, Maybe I could mm-hmm. see getting behind uh, all of this horseshit, but it would have to be martial law and and, and legitimate crackdowns over yeah. the risk of this thing spreading. The Constitution was never suspended for this horseshit. No, shit. it was never suspended. And yet it was constantly shit on. Yeah, and we've had mayors, governors yep. giving fucking edicts telling you what to fucking do and then having cops enforce it. And they know they're going to be immune because of qualified immunity. Yep. So let me tell you this. If the lawmakers and the people who fucking implement the laws are immune from repercussions from violating the Constitution, do we actually have a Constitution? I vote we don't now. And that needs to fucking stop. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I couldn't say it any better than that. All right, hang on, I got a my <laughs> Just the fact, I mean, The Atlantic was one of the biggest mainstream media proponents of lockdownerism. Yeah. And, and then you take a look at this. I mean, what were the, some of the things that they were saying? Let's refresh our memories here. Uh, a solution to COVID jab reviews, refusal. Take the jab or lose your job. Mm-hmm. Thanks. That sounds uh, great. Uh, this is Cuomo in New York. Do your job. He warns New York City businesses to uphold mask laws or lose licenses. There were no mask laws. None. There were mandates. Yeah. That's it. Not a, a mandate law. is not a fucking not law. law. So every time I went to, you know, like a chi- you know, Chinese takeout, whatever, and I saw that sign, wear your mask. It's the law. Like, motherfucker, somebody needs to watch Magic School Bus again. Yeah. <laughs> now, or Schoolhouse Rock, wrong. whatever the fuck it was. Uh, don't get me wrong. When I went out in public, I'd walk into a business and I'd put the fucking mask on just to fucking get by. I didn't need fucking people throwing f- flying crossbody cock blocks at Face me. Face diapers. Just to get the fuck out of there. I saw somebody still driving by themselves in their car today wearing a mask. I, so did I. Today. It was like a block away from my mother's house in Berkeley. She was like 80 years old. I'm like, come on, Grandmama. 
we are more than two and a half years into this farce. Yeah. Okay. Well, well 700,000 people died. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. 750,000 people died with COVID. 750,000 people in this country did not die from COVID. Uh, you know what? I hope uh, somebody takes over WikiLeaks and somebody leaks all of this horse shit about this uh the whole COVID craziness out for the general public. I mean, would they have had to pad the numbers if it was that bad? Would they no. have had to bribe hospitals with money for every COVID case on a death certificate the thing if is, it was that bad? What, what have I been saying the entire time? You're not going to be able to hide the numbers forever. Nope. All right. So we track fatalities, deaths, and what in, in, in all the countries, right? And we have a five-year moving average. We are above the five-year moving average of deaths that they're just not explained. I yep. wonder why that is. Uh, sudden adult death syndrome? Mm, yeah. Now, and, and listen, <laughs> when they were doing all the testing for the whole mRNA craziness, it was effective for a specific illness. And then a year later, when they got useful. reinfected with something else, a majority of the test animals died. Yep. It's serious business. And yet this is some no people, fucking joke. And some people are on their what? Sixth booster. Oh, we had yeah. the, who was that uh, fitness guru? He's, he uh, got I his six his name, shots yeah. and, and then he died. Yeah, he's like, if I die, then you were right. But if I don't, then you have to admit you were wrong. Well, somebody's being uh, planted and it's not me. Uh, somebody's getting a harsh talk to, talking to by old Scratch. Hashtag pure blood for life. Yeah. <laughs> somebody's getting uh, the fucking golden I mean, horn right And, up and it was ass. even crazier up in Canada. I mean, are, are there still people? I mean, is it worse up there now? I mean, do you just occasionally somebody, see somebody driving by themselves wearing a mask, or is this more common up there? Well, so I live in Alberta, right? That's like Texas North. So it's better here than, uh, than out east. But uh, yeah, they even even the kids going back to school at university, there was one university out east that had a vaccine mandate that you couldn't even get on the campus unless you were vaccinated and vaccinated. The definition changed. Of it's course. not just two. There's a booster at least now. Right? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so, yo, no, it's it's full up nuts. And so just when it when it comes to this whole forgiveness thing. No, never. I am never no. forgiving that bunch of people who decided that their irrational fear was all the justification they needed to abridge my civil liberties. Yeah. Screw you forever. Yeah. And, and now the, the New York decision, which basically says flat out in a legally binding decision that the jab is ineffective from a healthcare standpoint. Yeah, and that, that's from that's New York. Gonna, that's really going to fucking sting when the, the, because uh, there's tons of states where these lawsuits haven't gone through yet. Yeah. And now all these people have to be rehired with back pay. Yep. Now, and back pay what? in the back door. And I'm telling you right now, the same thing's going to happen for all those soldiers who were kicked out of the service because of this. They, did, they should yeah. be. They, everybody needs yeah. to be reinstituted and everybody needs to be paraded in front of the White House you know, while Biden's sitting there confused as shit because they haven't given him his CIA super drugs yet to make sure that he's cognizant, eating his bran muffin, shitting in his diaper, and they can all walk by the Oval Office like this. Yep. Fuck you, Mr. President. Yeah, and listen, well, I don't get, uh, don't get me started on the woke destroying our military. Um, you're not a real president anyway. We should we can do a whole show on that one. <laughs> yep. It's it's already happened up here. So even even just this whole thing yeah right now uh in our military you don't have to have the vax anymore they just dropped that mandate like last month however the soldiers that refused to get it before are still being charged and those processes are still going through yeah that's it, gonna it's, hold it's, up it's, well, yeah, it's yeah. awful and you know what it's uh, awful yeah it is and it's just like our military missed its recruiting goals by like 40 percent yeah ours too yeah yeah i yep. mean uh, well, they can't do that forever they're going to have to go back to yeah. the draft after two or three years of that. or more. Yeah, right around three years, they're going to run out of people. Yeah, and, and as soon as we get this studio finished, um, that there's still some stuff that has to be done, we have a National Guard recruiting guy down in Ohio who wants to drive up here and spill the beans on all of it. Oh, fuck yeah, let's do it. It's going to be awesome. Oh, fuck. I can't <laughs> wait to hear that. <laughs> yeah! And uh, also, uh, speaking of guests, this Thursday we have the Gala Sisters on the show. Okay. Uh, they are men's rights activists. They're very much against uh, the current Duluth model of domestic violence as it exists, and they're the ones who sent Matt our way. 
mm-hmm. to talk on the show and get his story out there. Okay. Cool. So it'll be really nice to talk to them, get to know them a little bit, have some fun on Thought Thursday. We're talking Matt. Matt. Matt, the guy who's currently embattled by all these things oh, with yeah, the, yeah. the attorneys breaking the law and trying to fuck him because they won't even let him admit to you know videos of his ex-wife beating the shit out of him. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Because they know they're uh, you're the not allowed the to admit evidence that, that proves your case. Done. Yeah. Well, I mean, have you ever seen a judge say, "Well, you're not allowed to admit evidence that proves your case"? Yeah, that, that'll get beaten. Up. <laughs> They'll beat that on appeal. <laughs> you can't do that. It's like puking on a pile of shit. And, and that's another thing. And that's a, a domestic violence thing. If all of the men who got picked up for domestic violence did, you know, pled not guilty. Went to a jury trial and then fucking clusterfuck sued everyone involved in your incarceration, it would stop. Yeah. Quite literally. Every prosecutor, like, well, I know she doesn't want to push it, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna prosecute you anyway. Good. Not guilty. Melissa's prosecution. Now you can sue the prosecutor and take his fucking money. Damn Fuck right. Fuck his uh qualified immunity and the cops who picked you up and the police department even the fucking jail for wrongful fucking impri- sue them all <laughs> you just uh, you just laid out the cliff notes for administrative violence duluth model edition yep <laughs> Man, can't help Speaking me. of which, uh, if you guys have not yet checked it out, if you look down there in the Meat Gazer box, we do have a link tree now. Makes things a hell of a lot easier when you're trying to navigate the myriad of shit that we've got all set up on yep. the internet. So you got links to the official website. You can contact Pop directly or you know ask to join Pop's Preppers. Uh-huh. You can donate on Cash App. That's the only way we get 100% of your donations. Uh, Stripe is on there as well. Give Sendbro Locals, Subscribe Star, and of course the Administrative Violence Webinar. You give that a click here yeah we were only going to put this up for just a limited time but we had so yep. many people like <clears throat> wanting wanting the information and they just want they didn't have the money yep. at the time and they, mm-hmm. I, yep and then you have here a total list of all of our channels any place where we broadcast live has been specifically noted that we go live on that channel every tuesday and thursday and of course you got your jeffrey paul action right here because everybody needs some jeffrey paul in their lives if you have not yet subscribed go to the link tree Click on Jeffrey Paul's link and subscribe because I said so. And there it is. Administrative violence. It's still 200 bucks. Yep. This is for the digital download only. Physical copies are donezo. For now. For now. <laughs> it's good times, great oldies. You can't believe this cluster fornication that we're living in right now, man. And to, and to think that after all this time and after all the bullshit and all the lawsuits and all these people who lost their jobs, some people who lost their lives, people who had to watch grandparents die alone in the hospital because of this weapons grade horse shit, all it's all they want now is we're sorry no, and I'm, you no. need to forgive us. No, 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 no. We're we're way beyond that. Sorry for calling the cops because your kid was playing on the merry-go-round next to one other kid. No, no. Literally, they shut down. Businesses at a whim. Yep. They fucking arrested people without... These people didn't violate a law. Yeah. Five Democrat governors murdered tens of thousands yeah. of people. And our governor here in Michigan is one of them. Yes. Uh, I mean, we, they've ruined our economy. Yeah. yeah I mean, we're, we're, we're running out of fuel. We've got like, what, Yep. 10 or 11 days of diesel fuel in the reserve here in the United States. And don't forget, BLM and Antifa were allowed to burn, loot, and murder... For an entire summer, and that was considered fiery but peaceful, and it wasn't a violation of COVID protocols whatsoever. Yeah. But if you protested lockdowns, you or were went terrible. to church. Yep, you're 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 done. Yeah, we're gonna lock you up. Now listen, I am I am not a religious person. I'm spiritual, <clears throat> uh, but uh, if you want to go to church, this country was founded on religious freedoms. Yeah. All right. In fact, it was such an important thing. People fucking got in boats that had no motors, sailed across the fucking ocean. It took like five months to come here to practice their religion. That's how important it used to be. Yeah, but uh, you get the you, we have the sniffles now. So uh, if yeah, you go you to can. church, you go to jail. Or if you go to church, you go to jail, and you're labeled right wing. Yep. Fuck you. Just go fuck you. Fuck. Ah, God yeah. damn it. Yeah, mm-hmm. give us COVID. And please forgive us. We were in the dark. No, you weren't in the dark. No, we're not going to forgive you. You had your asses up in the air ready for the Pelosi hammer special because your heads <laughs> were in the sand. 
Or and you and did up it to yourself. Ass. Yeah, and up your ass. Yeah. There, there's no room for the Pelosi hammer because your head's already up there. Mm. Looking around for a parking space. Fucking leftoids. Yeah. Uh, what are you gonna I'll, do? I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what the final straw will be. If we <laughs> finally actually get some information out here, if it ever comes out that there actually is some harm from these vaccines somehow, that there's some scientific oh, there evidence is. that has to, I know, but you know, that actually makes it out to the mainstream. Like, holy cow, stand by. Cause that's going to be, well, I think that legal, by. that legal decision in New York, I think is going to be, that's the beginning. That's the first straw on the camel's I hope back. You're right. I but, hope and it's going right. to start to bend. And pretty soon that camel going to need a chiropractor. But the, there, It's already coming out that uh, they tested it and they knew it didn't stop transmission. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they sold it. it as stopping transmission. Yeah, they admitted it under oath. So, yeah. oops. Yeah. Oops. Oh, we didn't know. Mm. We totally didn't know. We were in the dark. Forgive us for, you know, calling the cops on you, crushing your business, murdering your family members. It's all fine. Yeah. No. Yeah. Your 12-year-old had a heart attack because we said that if you didn't take the jab, we were going to take your job. Oh, you're just going to have to forgive us. Yeah. We were, you know, we're anti-government. No. You know, we're anti, you know, pharmaceutical companies we're anti big business we think the billionaires are evil but we said that you should lose your job if you didn't give money to the same big companies we claim to hate yeah <laughs> well they say forgiveness is a gift to give yourself i say they're completely wrong <laughs> lack of forgiveness keeps you warm at night with hate <laughs> i'll forgive people that that i know who apologize to me sincerely that's fine but aimless directionless rage against a bunch of leftoids who thought that it was totally cool to just oppress no. everybody into oblivion over their own no. irrational fears. Fuck you. That's I, right. I, I'm oh, totally fuck. cool fuck. with the, with that kind of blind, blind rage. Listen, I, I've been in the fucking Arctic cold steaming as I fucking hated when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, it'll keep you warm at night. Yeah. It's like uh, walking uh, outside uh, after a hot shower in the winter time. You just, it's like, it's steaming yeah, right off. Like, like, oh, oh, fucking fish and I. Bad <laughs> pops ready to roll. Actually, evil pop is here and his shirt is too tight. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop. Fat punisher. <laughs> uh, Dr. Fye says forgiveness. Absolutely not. They blackmailed millions of us into putting things in our bodies. We otherwise wouldn't have for fear of losing our livelihoods. Sounds like a bunch of Miramax actresses. Ooh. Ooh, uh, nice one. Businesses are paying exorbitant fines, not even mentioning the massive police overreach. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, in well, regards to a, the... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I can give you a story right from this town, uh, right from in Edmonton here. They, uh, there, was a pastor, there was a pastor here who didn't want to obey the restrictions and still had his congregation. They arrested him. Of course. And they then did. they put chain link fence around the church and patrolled it to make sure no one could get in. Oh, and I'm wow. like, I thought what borders didn't hell? work. Yeah. And, 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 you know, contrast that with a few months earlier when you had some indigenous protesters on the rail lines making sure the trains couldn't go anywhere. Nobody even remembers that now. And it's like they were allowed to do whatever they wanted. I of remember course. that. I'm yeah. like, uh, okay, what the hell? They're the yeah, red color. When you, when, you're, when, you're, when you're shipping off pastors because all they want to do is hold their service, and putting chain link fence around the church? Yep. What? Yeah. Yeah, no, there's not going to be any forgiveness. <laughs> and no, these are sorry. the same anti border people. They're the first ones to put up chains and have armed security while they're saying borders don't work and you shouldn't have guns. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Always pay attention to their actions, not their words. Their words are hor horse shit, they're hogwash. Oh, man. Uh, James L. with a $50 donation. Thank you so much. He says, I believe all gun laws are unconstitutional. Are. Have a drink on me. They are. Shall not be infringed. Mm. Mm. Listen, uh, that, I would love to have a tank in my driveway. Damn right. I, I would literally. <laughs> yeah. I would. I'd buy one if I could. I'll have a tank. I'll take a, a thirty grand for a tank. De a deal at any fucking size. And fuck it. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I want a Stuart tank, though, because they're, they're more zippy. Yep. They're smaller. All right. Uh, Smooth Criminal, in regards to the Pelosi situation, thinks that uh, the third person is going to be self-deleted. Oh. It might get Epstein yeah, or Clinton. Who's this? Uh, the, the third person that let the cops in that the Politico says now doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's going to get hammer timed. <laughs> and Smooth Criminal says Paul has the M pox. <laughs> He's got the monkey butt. <laughs> He's got the pussy brown eye. 
Oh man! Uh, <laughs> we went there. We actually went there. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> brown eye, brown eye blaster. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Dr. Fi says, I hear there may be some uh, Canadian uh, Air Force members who were fired for not getting the jab that might sue the government, but we'll see. Well, yep. we, we have like uh, a whole bunch of lawsuits in regards to that here in the United States. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm not reading all the super chats from YouTube right now. I'm just getting the ones that are germane to the subjects. And then when we go to new tech, we'll get into some of the other ones because we have some notices here that they're not all uh, Susie friendly. Yeah, yeah. So to speak. Oh, man. And then uh, da -da -da, simple Dan forever. Forgive us and turn the other cheek so we can slap you again. Forgiveness is a poor substitute for justice. That's right. That needs to go on a T-shirt. Forgiveness is a poor substitute for justice. Yep. You slap one cheek, you slap the other, and what happens then? Yep. Yeah, you fucking, you know, punch them in the mush. Yep. Smooth Criminal says, forgiveness is the gift you give yourself, but these hands are rated E for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. I like it. Uh, and John nice. Goodship, uh, look into the increase in mortality throughout the West since the vaccine was administered. And I forgot to click on it the last time, so this goes out to everyone who sent in a $50 donation tonight. There were a few. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Thank you very, very much. You guys are awesome. And it is 9 o'clock. We have 922 people currently watching on YouTube. It's one of our biggest audiences on there in a while. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Uh, we also have 49 watching us over on MGTOW.TV. Speaking of which, MGTOW, the best chat on the Internet. You can post <laughs> pictures in there. You can post GIFs in there. And they don't have to be YouTube friendly, if you know what I mean. Let me say, there's a bunch of uh, dials and peg floop de doos in there. Yes. <laughs> it's not bad. Absolutely. Some of them are anime. Some of them are real. Uh, old Storm Cloud over on Rumble, where we have 678 people watching, says, Greetings, gentlemen. Number 445 checking in with some dosh for your Army Grunts alcohol fuel fund. Yeah! Sent you an email with my fleshed out origin story. Once again, thank you for what you guys do. All right, you are awesome, good sir. Thank you very much. We'll get to that one. We got 37 watching over on D Live, and Twitch is shit in the bed tonight. Shocker, with only six people watching. <laughs> shit the bed, shocker. And Odyssey has got 79. All right. Excellent. Oh, we got some more Pelosi memes and stuff here coming in. All right, what do we got? Here we, go. we got some Pelosi memes. Uh oh. What's <laughs> this here? <laughs> Remember that time that your husband and a male prostitute had a hammer fight in their underwear? That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a mask meme here. Oh, no! What people think when they still see you wearing masks. And there's a nice. little, there's a little nice. black dildo in it. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. 37. My girlfriend sucked 37 masks in a row. In a row? That was actually yeah, a terrible. scene. I love that sh that scene. Oh, yeah. It's one of the funniest scenes ever. Oh, uh, fucking standing. All right. I think we are going to take a break and empty our squirrel bladders. Uh, but first thing is here we have uh, Caleb on says, on the subject of amnesty, I already turned to the other cheek, so no. Now is the time to grab the scourge and remove the corrupt. That's it. That should have happened 10 years ago. You're damn right. And one of the reasons uh, Trump got elected is because we know what's going on. Yep. We just we had no evidence, but we knew some, some crazy shit was going on there. If you have mm -hmm. two, two brain cells, you're like, wait a minute. They're saying this, but they're doing this. Yep. It's not, their actions and their words are not jiving. And we're, they never line up. So literally, we elected Trump because, yep. granted, he ran his mouth. Which I don't have a problem with. No. And he's rude and crass. We would be a little hypocritical but if we literally <laughs> he, for he comes in office and like our economy fucking takes off. What does that tell you? It's artificially being reined in. Yes. It's the hyper regulation of business that's doing it that causes the problems. It's not the corporations. Granted, the, the corporations, the, the big corporations, Apple, Google, Facebook, they are responsible for it because they're donating to politicians to increase those regulations to crush out competition. Competition can't spring up out of the <clears throat> ether. It has to grow in a free market. And if that market is less free, there you go. Guess what, Amazon? That needs to be broken down into five or six companies. 
I'm fine with most of these companies yeah. being broken down. Yeah, me, to too. Five or six. me too. Yeah. Microsoft, I'm sorry. Because fuck them. Fuck you. When you get enough money where you're making uh, poke and smoke bullshit and want to fuck with, uh, you know, what, put dust in the, you know, in the atmosphere to stop the sun from warming the earth, the guy's out of his fucking mind. Uh, Bill Gates is a piece of shit. I mean, he's literally got so much fucking money. He's out of it's out of your mind, money. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> It's just, uh, like I said, what a time to be alive. Yeah, well, it's fucking yeah. insane. I don't know. I'm not sure if I read this one. I want to make sure that I did. Got John Goodship with his $50 donation says, look into the increase in mortality throughout the West since the jab was administered. That's, I know. Yeah. Then ask me for forgiveness. Correct. And I heard that uh, one thing that's just changed about Twitter is you're actually allowed to post about that right now on that. That's not being censored now. Wow, apparently. free speech. I mean, who would have thunk it? Yeah. And I'm <laughs> just, I'm laughing my ass off in regards to what uh, is going on with the whole Elon Twitter debacle. Yeah. <sighs> it's uh, it's quite glorious. And there's, it's going to get worse because they, of course, this is. is the first, that was the first shot fired at big tech and the monopoly they have. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, it literally, they're, they're wronger than two boys fucking. They're caught conspiring with our government to violate yep. the entire country's constitutional rights. And the thing is, this being made public is just confirmation of what you and I have been saying for years. The government is colluding with their donor class to violate the Constitution in ways that politicians can't. And in return, the politicians look the other way. And they're getting money. Yep. There you go. All right. But we're going to go empty our squirrel bladders and refill our menageries. If you guys want to see some better butts and some really, really uh, distasteful super chats, follow us on over to Big Tech. Look for the links in the YouTube chat, and we will rejoin you in about five minutes. All right. And if you don't join us, you're kind of fucking up by the numbers because new tech is better and YouTube can suck my cock. <laughs> see you in a few. Take it easy.